I got a stick and so a rag, and then you put the glass on top of the rag so you can spray paint it. So this keeps it on here nice, because you don't want it to fall off and break, and then we're down back at the dollar store buying another one. All right, you got your frosted glass spray, and we're just going to give it one of these numbers, like this. Don't spray your camera, though, because you don't want to be buying one of those. You see how it gives it that dull, kind of a dull-y look? And neatness doesn't count because nobody's getting graded on this, so just give that a nice coat. And it really doesn't matter if you do it up thick or not, but I'm, do, I'm holding it like 10 to 12 inches away so it's not super bulked. Just like that. Doesn't really matter if you get a couple coats, I don't know. See how it looks? Nice and frosty, like a snowman, kind of. Now we're going to go back inside and um, try to keep this finger from bleeding. And we're going to go do some painting on the inside. We'll just let this dry. Okay, okay now that we're back, we're going to do some painting here. And um, you have sort of two options here. You can, you can go over this with a flat green paint if you want. You could spray paint it to make it look, um, you know, more dull and weathered. Or you could just leave it like this and we can just go over it with the red. So I got this barnyard red color that's uh, just a acrylic paint. And I got some out here. And this actually gets darker as it, um, when it dries, it gets darker than that. So it'll start out kind of bright. And what I like to do is go over the, go over the top. I painted a little bit there on the top and hit the seams. Um, like the top of the seams, just kind of go over that. And I'm just doing this kind of quickly to, for time. And hit, you know, the edges like where the attachments are like that. And then you can, um, you can get some water and you can kind of go over it so it's a little lighter too. That's why I like this acrylic paint. But you just kind of go over the top, go down the edges kind of like that. There's no real exact science. I mean, I usually go for the edges because I would think that would rust first. And um, you can kind of blend, put some on and just blend it a little bit like this. And like I said, when this dries, it will get a lot, um, a lot darker, so it looks more like rust. But um, if you're using this at night, it'll show up a little bit better rather than just a dark. All right, so I gave that the quick version and here's what you end up looking like is kind of a rusty look that I already did this before. Oh, this handle never comes off here. What's with this handle? All right, so if you go from that to kind of a rusty look like this when you're done. And just depending on how rusty do you want it to look? Well, if you want it more rusty, just paint more paint more red on there and if you want it less less and like I said um, you can paint it a darker color if you want um, paint some black on there if you want it to look uh, you know dirty this is uh, just a little quicker version you know you can spend as much time you want painting um, I just did this as a quick version so there's your uh, that's your paint job and we're gonna go um, next we're gonna paint your um, the glass part. Okay, now this clear thing is a clear binding cover from Impact. Impact Presentation Solutions, blah, blah, blah. We go to the office store, you can get these. They're a little bit thicker than um, transparencies. I don't know how easy it is to find transparencies, but they're just 8.5 by 11, I think. That's what it says, 8.5 by 11. They're clear, reliable, and nicely spaced displays the title page right there so anyway you get a pack of 25 of these I don't know whatever you only need one so if you got something like this around the house uh, pl any plastic will do pretty much because all we're gonna do is we're gonna fold it up to make a cylinder like this and paint it's gonna be painted so where you're gonna end up is is this painted and then we're gonna make it like this so it fits inside this to give it to give, give the light bulb the right color instead of having to try and find light bulbs you just do this and it makes it look kind of um, old and dirty and 
all that stuff. So, what we're going to do first is we're going to get our marker that I forgot to get. All right, we're going to take our marker and the clear plastic stuff, and we're just going to sort of get a ballpark on this. You know, I should flip this over so you can sort of see this like this. There, how's that? Take the width of this roughly as tall as this thing and just mark it like said from the edge to this point. Put your little mark there and then get a ruler or something. And don't drop that glass. Then get a ruler and just make a rough line there. So it's approximately, so when you cut it, you can cut it out. All right, so that's what we have is just a line for the top. And that's all we're going to use is just this much of the top part, okay? Are we all on the same page now? Okay. And we've got our piece of transparency. And what we're going to do is I just got like a little paper plate just for the heck of it. And you've already, you want to stir your paint with a stick. I, I just stirred it a little while ago, so. What I got is this brown, raw umber brown from Folk Art. Uh, it's just a dark brown. It doesn't have to be this exact color. You can see it's just kind of a muddy, dark brown, whatever. Once again, that's raw umber. Whatever umber is, somebody could comment and tell me what umber is. I don't know. And better yet, what is raw umber? Who, who knows? This one's kind of bright, but it works good with the brown because you're making it darker. This is school bus yellow. You could use a darker orange if you wanted to. And if you got it, if you got it dark enough, you could, um, so you don't need a lot, a lot of paint. I always hate to spray out more paint and, and, uh, where's my brush? Oh, brush is over here. Yonder. Don't forget to wash your brushes, kids. And brush your teeth too. All right. So you got your dark orange and your brown and just like that guy on TV who's like you're just gonna take a little bit you know that guy with the afro or the big hair you know we're just gonna take a little bit brown here we're just gonna mix a little mix a little orange not too much you want to retain that dark color and see we're gonna end up with a color that's kinda like this kind of like a real dark pumpkin-y color you see how the difference is with the bright orange so back to this, yeah, we're gonna end, and, and if it's, if it looks muddy like that, that's okay. Because when you get done, you can't see it with the frosted glass. So I'm gonna add a little bit more orange here, just a little bit like that. Just uh, sweep that around with your bristles until you get where you feel that's good. And a little bit, I'm gonna add a little bit more orange, not too much, accent that, there we go. And it's okay, like I said, it's okay if it's multicolored because that even looks better. See, so you got the multicolors here, so it's, it's, uh, looks, whatever. You'll see in the end. You'll see what it looks like. All right, so without further ado, we're just going to go ahead and start nailing this with some color. And it looks a lot brown, so you can always go back over it. And, um, wow, that's a lot of brown on there. Hmm. A lot of brown. That was a lot browner than I thought the brown was going to be. You can just go back with the orange and just hit that with the orange. Like I said, it's, it doesn't have to be one solid color of orange. This is going to come out kind of brownish. But for the sake of video, I'm just doing this kind of quick. See, you can throw in some lighter orange. and You know, my camera's making weird noises. I don't know what that is. It's like a little clicking noise, like there's Jiminy Crickets in the camera. See, I'm just painting up to the line right there. Stuff is uh, start out light at the bottom and then make it darker at the top. So it looks like the burnt, um, where it's kind of uh, muddy and burned around the top, and then the, it's lighter at the bottom because when these things burn in real life, the smoke goes up and the smoke gets on the glass. Where's the glass? The smoke usually gets on the top of the glass anyway. So if it starts out lighter and darker at the top, I mean, you could you could spend hours and hours making this thing. What am I gonna do? Paint that? You know, uh, getting this right. And these things, you know, this stuff's cheap. So if you want to change your mind, whatever. Anyway, here we are. So we painted that whole 
thing, so it's going to look a little bit like this. It's a little bit transparent. It's not supposed to be... Um, I'll show you what it looks like with the bulb real quick. It's not supposed to be um, completely... Whatever. Opaque, is that the word? Opaque. And you could do two coats, just depending on how dark you want it. What I did, I just painted it, and then I put the bulb behind it and said, how bright is that? And this just kind of worked out. So there we go. So you got this brownish look, and then I got this one. And if you wanted to, see, like I already painted this, you can always come back and um, touch it up, because it looks like there's some little scratches in there. Come back and touch that up, like yonder. And the more paint you put on it, the less light will go through, so it'll just be a little darker. It was pretty bright with the pretty bright with the first coat. I just did one coat, and it turned out pretty good. All right, so you got that. You let that air dry for a while. Cause one thing I like about watercolor paints is they dry fast. Like if you do oil, it takes like an hour or two, sometimes longer. Don't forget to clean your brushes too. We don't want that to get all caked up. So we're gonna put that aside and we're gonna take a look at this with the light bulb through it, all right? See what that all looks right, like. All right, so we got Mr. Light Bulb from the thing. And just to give you the preview of what that looks like, after you paint it, it's got kind of a, that look to it. <clears throat> like this. See how, see how you just curl that up? So you say, oh, that looks like a bunch of paint on a piece of plastic. Well, when you put the, when you put this together with this, and then the magic kind of happens. See that? So you don't see all the brush strokes. And see that? It doesn't look bright now, but um, when you turn out this bright light, it does. See? All right, so uh, the reason I did not paint this glass, if anybody's saying, well, why didn't you just paint the glass? One reason is, is because it will scrape off um, and I don't think it looks as good with the paint on the outside of the glass because you can see the brush, the brush strokes better. But if you put this inside, you don't see the brush strokes as much. It just kind of dulls it out, makes it, it lessens the brush strokes. And feel free to, you know, do your own modifications and all that. But this is a pretty, this is just sort of the inexpensive way to go and probably cost you under 20 bucks maybe with the paint and everything. So that's what you end up with. And uh, another thing is, when I used to go to Disney World all the time, I used to always notice how they did their lights, and I used to take pictures of them, and this is what I came up with from what they had, is they just kind of painted that there, and enough of that. So let's, hopefully your glass, oops, almost broke that. Don't break this, though. Hopefully this is done drying so we can go get that and put that together with this and get that all going and get, get that you want to put together sometime today. Okay.